Welcome to NC DIY. Today we are going to replace the garage door opener. Uh, a couple days ago the opener just stopped working. I watched a few YouTube videos and found out the, the logic board is bad. So you can see here how quickly the lights blinking on the control, the wall control, and that can mean either it's locked or the logic board's bad. And when you press to unlock, it, it still blinks. That just means the the board here in in the opener is bad. And you can order a replacement board. I could not find one for this garage door opener. It's about 19 years old, so. Um, and they cost about 130 bucks and for $190 you can buy a completely new one, belt drive, lifetime warranty on the motor and uh, new controllers, new keypad for outside, all that stuff. So it made sense just to buy a new one. And we'll go ahead and take this old one down and put the new one up. See how difficult it is. I'm not sure, never done it. We'll see. First we'll Go ahead and take the disconnect the door from the from the trolley, and I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the the, the nuts for the and the bolts for the uh, track connecting to the wall bracket there, and then we'll disconnect the the motor on the other side. It's just got a lock ring. Bolt these. And my hope is we can reuse this wall bracket on the new opener. It's the same brand, Chamberlain. Actually, I see there's a Unplug the old one, even though it doesn't operate, just in case it does operate, you go and plug that. Let's pull this pin out, probably a lot easier. Okay, now we'll go pull the, the opener down. And disconnect the control wires. And the sensor wires. And on the other side. Pull these bulbs out in case I drop a garage door opener. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and lift up on it, push the bolts through, and it should drop down. Of course, the track's probably gonna drop. We'll see how this goes. Okay, it's loose. So it's down. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab the box to the new one and go ahead and assemble it. And get it up. Like I said, hopefully I can reuse the wall bracket that's up there. Uh, so reuse the wall bracket and, and I would imagine I can reuse the, the mounting straps that the, the motor was attached to, the, the opener was attached to. So let's see if it all fits. Okay, so this is a new garage door opener. Same brand, Chamberlain. Um, this one's a belt drive. The old one was a chain, train, chain drive, excuse me. And this is three quarter horsepower, just like the old one. So uh, let's go ahead and open up the box, see what we got in here and get it assembled and get it up. All right, so 
so it comes with the new wall control. Comes with two remotes. Two of the sensors. I actually installed new sensors two days ago, thinking maybe it was the sensors that were the issue, and they are the same ones as these, so I'm not gonna install new sensors today. Instructions. Of course, the, the power unit. It does have that MyQ system and uh, so Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. You need the Wi-Fi for the for the MyQ to control the garage door opener with your phone. New track. These are the clips to the, the sensors, which again, I already installed new sensors, so I won't be using these. This is the belt. Like I said, belt drive instead of the old chain drive. Supposed to be quieter. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, this is just a cover to the belt drive for the motor. New keypad remote. This is just the pulley for the belt at the garage door end, and it's like tensioner spring and stuff that goes with the trolley. Brackets. And the trolley that rides along the track and connects to the belt and pulls the door up. First thing we'll do is assemble the, the track. This, this end goes toward the garage door. I did watch the assembly video before, but I'll just look at the directions just to make sure. Alright, so first thing we're going to install the idler pulley. Here's the idler pulley. for the pulley. This looks like the, the nut and the lock washer for it. The big hole is up and this this tab up as well. Let's go ahead and put the pulley in. So it says to pass 12 inches of the belt through the window. So we'll go ahead and tighten this down. Bend this tab up 90 degrees. Now we're going to go ahead and put the rails together um, and put the trolley on the track. We'll go ahead and slide the tracks together until we get to the end by the motor and uh, put the trolley in and explain more from there. So this is the end that bolts to the motor. So we gotta slide the trolley on before we, we snap this on. So. Place the screwdriver in the hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide the trolley onto the end of the track. Stop it. 
Then we'll go ahead and place the, the bracket that bolts to the motor in. That's in. Now we're gonna get the motor put it on some cardboard to protect it. Just so gonna loosen these. And we're gonna go ahead and support the end of the track on top of the box so that it's up even with the, the motor. Now we're gonna bring the belt around and have the ends near where the, the trolley's at. So I actually have to bring it around to the other side. Screwdriver on this side. Right there, like that. Okay, so you need to release, unthread this tensioner spring. This, this threaded rod's got a, a flat end, and there's a flat end in the hole, so you slide it through there, and it just lets you easily thread this back on without having a, that threaded rod spinning around on you. And you've got to leave enough room that this link, just a little chain link. Leave enough space that you can get that to link up. Like so. Go ahead and put the clip in. It's like a bike chain. Okay, so that's secured. Start tensioning this, and it says get it finger tight. Once you've got it hand tightened against the, the trolley, the spring, put a flat tip screwdriver into the slot. Turn this, tighten it a quarter turn, and it should release the spring, and it should expand about a quarter inch. Trolley nut with an adjustable wrench, about a quarter turn until the spring releases and snaps the nut ring against the trolley. challenge is getting it not to turn. There it goes. So it should be about an inch and a quarter and you see how it, it released and went flat against the, the bracket here. All right. So we got the pulley cover on and now I think it's time to go ahead and and hang the opener in the track. So, see what's next. Next is to install the header bracket. It's the bracket on the garage door here. So, they're already installed for us because we had a previous garage door opener, the same brand. So, uh, here and then up there at the, the header bracket are already installed. So, 
I won't be going through that. We do need to install the header bracket because this track is narrower. It's narrower than the previous track with the, the chain. So for the header bracket, we do need to put the new bracket on because it's it's narrower. It's, it's more narrow right here. Whereas up, you can see the difference. Because we already had the old bracket installed, I'm just going to mark on the wall where the clevis pin goes through, basically the pivot point there for the track connection point, and then I'll match the new tracks. I'll match that up. Same location, so same height is what I'm trying to say. So you can see the marks from the old hole where the clevis pin would go through and how high it would be. And this one's pretty much in line, it's just a little bit above. So I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, bolt hole. Okay, now we need to put this clevis pin through the track here. And I'm gonna skip some steps just because we already have the, the hanger up there and hopefully the distance and the height and everything works. So now we're gonna go ahead and hang the garage door opener up on the bracket here uh, just with two uh, Two bolts. So the distance isn't quite the same. The track's a little bit longer on this garage door opener. It's able to bend the, the angles back a little bit. It should hold. So now we've got to connect the, the trolley to the door. We've already got the bracket on the door from the other garage door opener. I'm gonna to try to use the old arm. It came, of course, with the new arm, but this one's already adjusted for the door. And the trolley, hopefully it matches up. And we'll, we'll see here. For sectional doors, it shows the J going like this. Now we're gonna tie the emergency cord to the release on the trolley. Just put a knot on the end of the cord. Like that. Now the trolley travels. So I think I put the trolley on backwards. Now I'm gonna have to disconnect the track from the, from the garage door opener and flip the trolley around. This hole here should be flipped around facing forward. 
I had it backwards, but and I thought I was going to have to release the track from the door opener to flip it around, but no. You can just kind of rotate it, turn it around, rotate it, and now it's, it's back on in the correct direction. So you just put this clevis pin through and engage this trolley with the, the travel mechanism in the back. This thing's on reverse. I think I've got the trolley on backwards. the belt so I can slide the trolley down. I'll have to pull the track off the, the garage door motor and uh, slide the trolley off the carrier for the trolley and reverse it. Try to pull the pressure off the belt like this. The tension. Detension the belt. Got the trolley, the carrier reversed. Now I gotta put the belt back. I'm gonna fasten the garage door opener to the track first. Put the belt up.
Okay, so now it's in the correct direction. The belt's tensioned up. I just need to put the little housing on top of the, the drive pulley. Now we will install the wall control. All right, you'll see it's labeled with a white and a red. I'm going to disconnect those, connect them up to the new controller. Again, we have white, red. casing off a little bit more give us give us some room That's connected. Now we got to connect it at the garage door opener. So this is the control wire coming from the wall, and it's red and white. Red goes into the red. White goes into the white. All right. These come from the, these wires are from the sensors. One's got a black stripe and one's got a white stripe. And they are literally barely any to thread in there or to get in there. Not much slack left. But let's see if it works. Now we'll plug it in, and then we gotta set the uh, the open and the close distances. So now we're gonna go ahead and program the travel. Uh, I've never done this before on a newer garage door opener like this, but it's relatively automatic. So you press the travel set button until it blinks. Press up until the door gets to the desired location. That's it. And now for down. Right. Now it's going to run through the, the sequence. Now we're going to test the safety reversal system, that's the, the sensors down at the bottom of the garage door, the optical sensors. Go ahead and open the garage door. There it goes. Alright, now we're going to test the sensors, make sure that it reverses the garage door when I walk across it. So we'll go ahead and close the door. Let's see if it, we'll see if it reverses. All right, so the safety sensors work. Now we're gonna uh, test the, uh, what they, they call the protector system to make sure that if the door closes down on top of something, a 
child, for instance, that it'll automatically reverse and go back up. So for that, they say to put a two by four under the where the door is going to hit the ground and it should reverse when it hits a two by four. Okay, so you see it's reversing on its own. Hit the object underneath, sensed it, and now it's reversing. So both of the safety systems work on the door. Uh, the doors, complete, the opener is complete now, the installation is complete. So now we're going to install the keypad for outdoors, and uh, that's it. Then we'll just have to program our phone so that it opens up with the, the MyQ system. So now we'll put the keypad in. It's pretty quiet. This is really the same keypad we already have in there, but so I don't have to reprogram the, the opener. We'll use this one because it's already programmed to the opener. We'll just pull the old one off the wall and put this one on. hit the learn button on the garage door opener, come to the keypad, enter the four digit pin that you want to use to open and close the door, press and hold the enter button. When the light blinks on the garage door opener, it's learned the code and we'll try closing it one more time. And there it goes. Alright, so we we're successfully able to install our Chamberlain 3 quarter horsepower Delta Ride garage door opener. And uh, we did have that one hiccup with the trolley being installed in reverse, so make sure when you assemble the track you've got the trolley facing in the correct direction. Uh, also, we saved a little bit of time because we were able to reuse this bracket on the garage door and we are able to install the new wall bracket at the same height that the other bracket was installed for the older garage door. We reused this arm, and uh, that was all because we had a, previously had a Chamberlain garage door opener installed, uh, but again, it was about 17, 18 years old, and the logic board went bad. So uh, with that, thanks for watching Landon DIY. Please subscribe and uh, like and comment, and we'll see you in the next video.